All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome to week 13. And today we're going to be looking at um, Git and GitHub. So um, I believe we must have seen the class lesson where it was uh, illustrated how to download the Git bash and how to use it as well. Now, I'm just going to throw a little bit light on that. And if anyone has any question concerning the installation, you can always reach out to me from the uh, WhatsApp group. So today I'm going to start with um, the how to configure the um, kits on our system. Now, I um, have here my Visual Studio code. And in my Visual Studio code, I have my git bash. Uh, ID installed as well. So I can use my git bash from my Vidra Studio code. It's uh, convenient for me because I can multitask other um, tasks as well. So if I have to so if I have to um, write a code on my file, I can do that from the terminal of here or on the um, workspace and also I can use my git commands and interact with my github account from here. So let's begin. Now what is git? Git, git is a distributed um, version control that allows you to track changes to your files over time. It's a little bit more like a backup. It can work as a backup. Uh, it's designed to handle projects of any size from small individual projects to large or collaborative um, projects. So it could involve lots of uh, contributors. So this is a virtual control that is built for such heavy um, projects or tasks. And GitHub, on the other hand, is a web-based hosting service. So GitHub, most times people don't know the difference. So the GitHub itself is the web-based hosting service for version control using Git. Uh, it provides a platform. So on my other hand here, you can see my GitHub um, accounts. I'm already logged in. So you can use this case with GitHub um, account. So it's a web-based hosting service for version control using Git. It provides a platform for developers to collaborate on projects share code, track issues, and review changes. So it, it's, um, it's one of the most popular platforms for open source projects and is widely used by developers worldwide. So you can see on my account here that I have different um, repositories. So if you do not know what the repository is yet, then we're going to see how it works when we uh, start going into them step by step. All right, so um, why do we use Git? Now, we use Git for collaborations. It's very effective for collaborations. Um, Git and GitHub makes it easier for multiple developers to work together on the same code base. Now, this is very, very effective for collaboration because most times uh, when you get to the real world, where you want to start working on real life projects. Some projects are um, really too large for one person to handle. So let's say uh, you're going to be working on a front-end project since this is the course one for front-end development. And you are going to be working on a front-end project and someone else will be working on the back end. Now, this makes communication more um, um, easier. Our codes can easily relate because now we have to look at how it works on this platform before or we have to uh, incorporate it on the platform test it see how it works before we um, deploy to production so each and every one of us can easily contribute to a project if we are collaborating to a, for, you know, on a project for example can easily uh, contribute to a project and um, have a one base for all uh, contributions where we can check to see if it's um, good to go or not, if there are issues or not. Now, version control kits, um, it, it, it's also um, 
keeps track of all changes made to your files, allowing you to revert to any previous version if necessary. So this is like a backup system as well. Let's say you had a working system and after some little changes or some minor changes requested from the client, you found out you uh, had bugs. And now the advantage of this is that for every commit, for every um, progress you have made that has been um, backed up or pushed to the to your GitHub account, it's you can easily revert to any of these progress at any particular time. So as long as you have your repository, sorry, in your GitHub, so you can easily revert to any progress you have made um, previously. Now, it's also good for uh, branching and merging. So it enables you to create branches, new features or experiments, and then merge them back into the main code base when ready. So you can explore um, new features, try out new stuff on your project and see if it works before you merge into the main uh, uh, branch. So it uses branch, it uses something we call branch, and the branch is just like saying, I do not want to um, uh, uh, put this whole experiment in the main working area. I want to try it out first, test it to see how it works. And then if it works with uh, the system perfectly, now you want to merge it to the main working area. So you see how the working system makes projects um, um, progress more more convenient. So that way you hardly have issues like um, uh, maybe just one change is destroying the whole system because you have to test it on a branch and then before you uh, merge into the main branch. And then also uh, open source provides that GitHub provides a platform for sharing and contributing to open source projects. And also it's also good, it allows team members to review and comment on proposed changes before merging them into the main code base. So when we have a collaborative project and there are several ideas, they can all be easily um, in, uh, applied and then review properly to make sure that there are no conflicts and then there are no um, setback when these ideas are put to place. So it's, it enables efficient uh, review process from everyone's um, contribution before merging to or um, deploying to production. Now, first, before we work with Git, we must have it installed in our system. So I have Git, and if you need to install Git, you can always refer to the class lesson where the uh, process was um, illustrated, how you can go to the Git website, download the Git version for your system, and um, install it. Now, before we can use Git, you must have it installed into your system, and the installation process uh, varies depending on your operating, operating system. So you can always refer back to the class lesson and you see, but if you have any challenges installing your kids, you can always reach out to us on the uh, WhatsApp class. So if you're using Linux or you're using Mac, there are different um, installation process as well. Now, we're going to move to configuring the kids. And to begin, well, after you have your git installed, you need to configure it with um, a name and email address. So this name and email address is expected to be the same name and email address you have when on your GitHub account. So first you should have a GitHub account before you uh, get to this part. So if you do not have a GitHub account, you can go to github.com and create an account. So the email and the username you create or you use to create your account on GitHub is what you are going to use to configure your, um, your Git 
the git on your system now to configure git on system you use the git command git config it's space double hyphen global username so this is for username so user dot name and then in a pair of quotes you input the username now i already have my uh, git config configured for my system so i won't be doing this but if you have to what you have to do is um, use the command git config global user dot name and you input your username in between the um, quotes so my username would have been any tab so this is what i would have used if i had not configured my um, kits on my system now to also uh, complete this configuration next you want to configure your um, email so the uh, only thing changing here is the uh, user.name now will be user.email and in the pair of quotes you Input the email address that you have used to create your GitHub account. So you can have different GitHub account configured on your system. You have to make sure you um, do this so you have it configured on your system. And then after doing this, you want to have uh, a connection. So to have connection from your own, your system to GitHub, so you can easily. Um, um, create repositories, connect these repositories, push progresses and have them backed up and even deploy to production as well. So the uh, next step, you want to create a connection and creating a connection, you can always refer back to the class lesson where it was uh, uh, done using um, the different keys we, we tried to uh, naming them you can try naming your your uh, keys or you can leave it as the, the default name now i'm just going to skip that part because of time because there's still much that we have to cover so you can refer back to the class lesson too um but if you have any question you can ask here and you can have it um, um clarified so uh, after creating your key you uh, now want to start working with your GitHub. Now, the one thing you do often is creating repositories. Now, there are different ways we use to create repositories in GitHub. And these repositories can as well be referred to as a folder on your system. So you have a project folder on your system. It can uh, also be referred to as a repository. So we call it repositories on uh, on GitHub. So the project project folder itself can hold several files, several other type of um, 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 softwares or developments that you have created. But it's uh, all going to be in the repository for whenever you need to access them. All right. So there are several ways we can do this, and the commands we use to do this you do not have to um, um, remember all of them in your, your head you can always have them jot down so you can refer to them whenever you need to but the creating repositories are going to be something you often do when using git or version control system now there are two ways to do this we can create the repository first on the github uh, website or we creates a folder which like i said the repository refers most times as a folder on our system a project folder where you want to have all your developments done and you can um, now um, connect it to a repository with the same name on github so i'm going to make use of one here and which is usually the easiest uh, to do for me personally but depends on the um, situation so you might want to maybe you already have 
a project you worked on already and you want to have it pushed to GitHub or you want to share it with other developers on GitHub. So that's why we're going to look at the two different ways of doing this. So the first one is when you have the projects uh, at mine and you already know what uh, the name would be, you can come over here and create a new project. So these are my repositories. So I'm going to select this new, which means new repository. And I give the name of the repository. So I'm going to call this test. And you can always give a description. It's good you give a description. So when other developers are um, exploring or you have, since this is going to be a public repository and other developers want to quickly see what the, your project is about, your description is one um, area that they are going to make use of to know uh, or have more understanding or to know what you have on your repository. So I have it here as public and the name is test. I would skip the description since this is just for testing purpose. Um, now I'm going to add a readme. So the difference again is when creating a folder on your system, let's say you have a folder on your system and you already have uh, files or folders, subfolders and files in it, you um, are going to create the rep initi initiate the repository on your system before creating it here or you can clone it if you have nothing yet on you don't have a folder you have created for for this project so this is how you do it so you when you're creating a new repository that you want to clone to your system you make sure to add the readme else the process will be different so i am going to include the readme and I will create. Now I have the repository created and I have just one file inside this repository, which is the readme that was created. So I could always edit the readme from here. So most times this readme is also like a mini description, but can be creatively used. Now you can see um, other developers' uh, repositories and when you maybe go to these repositories, you're going to find a readme that is going to maybe break down some um, aspects of that project or it could be used for other creative purposes to as well. So most developers have different ways they make use of the readme, but it's usually uh, important for information to as well for your repository. Now, I have this repository called test created here and the main the branch it's on now is the main. So when creating a repository on GitHub, it's the default branch is usually main, but when creating on your system first, the default branch is master, which will be renamed to main. And we're going to do that as well. So now to get this um, repository cloned on our system, we are going to make use of the SSH address. So you come to the code, you select the code, and the address is revealed. You copy the SSH address and head over to your system. And now um, I'm going to navigate to a folder that I want this um, repository to be. So I am currently on my uh, root folder my system so I want to go to my desktop all right now I am currently on my desktop and this is where I want to have this folder clone so when I um, I clone this folder on my desktop is going to clone uh, the repository as a folder including the readme file that was created inside the repository so to do that we use git clone
and the address that was copied from um, the repository. So I pasted the address here. I'm going to say enter. Now I went creating my key. I uh, used a passphrase. So which is why it's asking me to input my passphrase. Now I have my um, repository test clone. To confirm this, I am going to um, check now to see if I have my um, folder cloned. So I have used the ls command to check for all files that are on my system. Now I have files and folders, but I'm just going to look for the test folder. So I have readmes, I have zips. All right. So the test for repository is in my desktop. So I'm going to um, clear this out so you can see. The working space properly. Now I have to um, navigate to the folder before I can be able to um, make use of this folder or create files and start my um, um, project work. So to do that, I select use the CD to change directory to um, test. Test is the name of this repository. Now you can see here it also specifies the branch name and from here on I can start creating files, um, writing codes and then push them to the repository that I have. So we're going to look at how to push files to repository. Now let's try to initialize a repository on, uh, on the system. Just for um, uh, situations where we have a folder that we have um, that we have a whole development done so we want to send it to github so we have to initialize the folder first to that the project folder to a repository all right now i will go out from this folder Now the commands we use to navigate in a uh, command line in a terminal, we we can always um, research them. There are several commands that can be used in creating files, viewing files, uh, writing. There are just so much we can do from the terminal. Now um, I want to create a folder that I'm going to initialize as a repository. So to create a folder, we use the make directory command. And I would name this test2. So I have created a test2 folder. Now I want to initialize the folder as a repository. So I'm going to navigate into the folder, test 2. Now I'm in the folder, you can read from the um, at the parts here that I'm currently in the desktop area and there's area of my system and I've entered the test 2 folder which we created here. Now to make this uh, folder a repository, I first want to use the git init. So the git init command is uh, what we use to create new git um, directory. So I'm going to add git init. And now we have this folder initialized as an empty git repository. And uh, the branch 
the third branch that was given is now the master branch. But we're going to change this to me uh, when uh, as we go. So now I'm going to return back to my home. So let's say I have files here in this folder. I'm going to open the folder. to create a file in this folder. I'm going to call this index. That's just to so I, I won't um, write any pendants. So I can illustrate how to add changes. Now we have the folder named test two. So let's see how to create a repository. Uh, we're going to push the uh, file we have here in this folder to the repository. So we come back to uh, the GitHub website and we select new, or you can make use of this quick repository um, version here. And the name is test2, and it's available. So I'm going to select public since I am not using um, premium account so I'm going to select public and create now this does not have a readme it's just going to create this repository for us to be able to connect to um, the one we have on our system now you can see it always gives the commands that we need to make this happen so you don't have to um, try to maybe memorize them all the time and get confused. So you can always make use of the commands that it suggests here. So now you see that we have um, the commands here. So one thing I can do is copy the all of the commands here and paste it directly on my um, terminal and select enter and then the repository is going to be uh, so now i'm going to explain each of the commands here first so the echo test to read me is going to create this if you do not have okay sorry about that i don't know if i'm louder now if it's louder you let me know so if it's not i can try and speak louder All right, um, the commands we have here, first it's going to create a readme file and then initiate, which we've already done, it's going to initiate. So this is if we had not created anything in the folder we have on our system, but we currently have something there. So now we want to initiate it as a repository, which we have did also and it's um, created it's created the master branch as default now um, we want to add something to the repository so we use the git add and since the readme was created using this echo uh, uh, test to we can now add the readme as our first commit and we use the git commits uh, command to first of all commit the file that we've added and we also specify the branch so we rename the branch from master so it's we this is the command we use to for git branch and you change the name to main that's the uh, main branch now and also we connect using the address as well just like we did for the clone so we use git remote add origin and the url for the repository 
that will be spreaded on GitHub, and then you can push now to the uh, repository directly. So that's what this um, commands were meant to do. But well, right here we have a file called index.html, and we have also initiated this repository to be a repository that we're going to uh, start um, pushing files to. So now understanding these commands, I know I don't need this, I don't need this, and I don't need this. So I, when I want to add, I'm going to add the index.html that I have created here. So I'm just going to add some files here. Or I'm going to use a readme. So I'll use this kind of illustration. Okay, so now with this, I can start from here. So all I have to do is take the co uh, command from this part. Now I have the same readme. So I'm, I, I'm just doing this to show you how to understand what you need from um, this block of commands. But before you want to copy it, just in case you want to be sure that you have initiated it and you don't need to do this. So I'm going to start from here and I will paste it. Yeah, so it's pasting them one by one and it goes one by one. So you can see all the commands are just um, automatically uh, taking effect. So now it has changed from the branch master to main after uh, it has um, yeah this is where we initialized earlier and then we started from the add readme and it's added the readme that I created here since I didn't use the echo I created it here and then it's, we added the readme first now the index.html has not been added yet so we'll come back to um, that now we added the readme file and we used the git commit to commit this to our uh, staging area, so which is um, the command git commit. And now we changed the branch name from main from master to main because main is the default base for branches in um, GitHub. Now we also included the URL with kids remote add origin the URL that connects this repository to the one we have on GitHub and then we pushed okay I'm going to click enter for this and I'm going to add my passphrase now this is going to push this uh, readme to the repository so if I return here and I refresh this page, I'm going to find the repository created with the readme that we have added. So this is the other way we can use to um, uh, add an existing repository, an, uh, an existing project in a folder to GitHub or to a repository on GitHub. So there are different other uh, uh, commands that goes on as you uh, work with GitHub. So we're going to look at the other different type of commands. Um, we've seen how to add a file. So I'm going to also illustrate more. There are different ways that we can clear this out. More space. So, um, to add files 
currently we have just one file which is the readme file on the repository so if we want to add more files say we have uh, files and we made some changes to the file we want to add them we can either use the git add and specify the name of the file we want to add and the name here is index dot html so if i so click enter it's going to um, um, add this file to the working tree but if we maybe have several files in this project folder that we want to add to our repository you use the uh, dots uh, symbol full stop symbol and this is going to add all files that was um, added before the last uh, commits or for the last push so every changes that has been made inside the files as well will be added so this is another way we can do this and then after we do this so i'm going to just add the index that's html so i have added this but previously if i wanted to know the status to know if i have anything on my working tree what i would have done is use the git status but i'm just going to finish with the commits and i'll show how that works so next i want to commit this so i use the git commit hyphen m and pair of quotes um i can say initial since this is a first of shell commits after creating the um repository so I say initial comments so you always want to make sure that these comments make sense since if you are working in a collaborative uh, project you always want to make sure your, your comments has a good uh, relative meaning to what you have done on that particular push so that others can easily understand what was done and if they maybe if it's something that they have to add to or they require for their own project they will know where to uh, look now i'm going to commit this and then i will push to the um, branch that we rename which is the main so next i'm going to say um, please push the origin so it's going to ask my passphrase So this has been added successfully and if we check our repository, we're going to find the index.html added, added to the repository and you can see that the time it was added was now one minute ago. So now there are other commands that we would uh, going to, we're going to make use of in, uh, in our projects. So let, let's say you have been working and you want to be certain what status your project um, is on so you want to know if maybe you are in a branch a particular branch because one thing with uh, it's making use of version control is that you always want to work in a temporary branch before and, and test it and check to see everything works well before you um, merge to the main branch where the next step will be to deploy to production so um now first we want to check the status of this project or this repository that means everything in the repository so you can make use of the key status so this command will show you um 
your current status of your repository. So now it says I am on the branch name and my branch is up to date with origin name and nothing to commit working tree clean. So I have uh, already committed everything I have on this repository to the main uh, repository, the main branch repository in GitHub. So that's why we have nothing here. But if I had something done, it's going to tell me that I have something that I have not um, yet committed. So I have to add it to my working tree. And then I will also have um, this log. We have this log. Uh, now this command displays a list of all the commits in your repository. So I'm going to click enter. Now, this is now this is showing me uh, the history of my uh, comments and comments uh, comments that I have done so far. So for every comment I have done on this repository, this is so the first one was um, initial comments, and this is the time it was done, and the also now is me, my username and my email, the dates, the time. And this is the comments I used. And then the second one was um, also today, as you can see, and the also is me as well. So this helps to tell uh, your history of uh, comments so far. It's really handy when you uh, want to track your comments history or a particular um, comment. So you know the time and when to revert back to any value if you want if you need to. All right, now we also have um, commands to create new branch since uh, we mostly do not want to work on the main branch. So you can have your um, system tested properly before you merge. So it's one effective way you can use to create a good working system and um, that's free of a lot of bugs and errors. So to create a new branch, we use the command git branch. And you specify the branch name. So as once you create, let's say we want to create a new branch here called test as well. So if I hit enter, it's going to create a new branch. Now, how do I know uh, what branch I am on or the branches I have? The command to do that is uh, git branch. And it's going to tell me the branches I have and what branch I, I am on currently. So the one with the asterisk is the main branch, which means that's the branch I am on. And I also have a branch called test. So um, if I want to switch from this branch, there are different commands. You can make use of um, git checkout. So let's look at that. So let's switch to the new branch to say git. So we are currently on the main. So I'm going to select this. Sorry, I'm going to select the branch I want to check out. So I use the kids to check out. Now this has switched us to the um, 
test branch so we can have all the um, progress or the, the, the task or anything we want to do on our project have it done and pushed to this branch on the repository and then once it's tested and you see it has uh, uh, no errors or no uh, bug then you can also come back to to merge here or you can merge on github now first year i if i have uh, checked that everything once i've made my changes and committed them to the new branch now to um, merge the branch back into the main we can do that here or we can do that on the repository so first i want to switch to so i'm going to show you another command to switch to the main you can make use of this switch and specify the name you want of the branch you want to switch to. So the branch I want to switch to is main. So I can say git switch main. So I have switched to the main branch. And then if I want to merge, since I uh, this is a personal project, it's not a collaborative project, and I have reviewed and seen that everything is good to go, I can make use of the command git merge and I specify the branch name that I want to merge it with. So I have nothing done here. So I won't be merging since this isn't uh, a real project. But this is how we do. So you always make sure you specify the branch name that you want to merge with. All right. So this are uh, basically um, most of what you need to know when you uh, start working with with kids of or, uh, the kids of version control. Now there are other things that I would just mention because it, it requires lots of um, um, pro, uh, uh, other necessary things to be done for us to see every aspect of the uh, kids of command. But as we work, we especially um, with our uh, intent, they, they've also experienced this, how to make use of this version control uh, with our system. So uh, it, it's mostly beneficial when you have a project to work on, and that's one of the best times to make use of this and learn properly as you use it. So most of the concepts that you're going to find or hear mostly in kids, this up, um, you hear mostly uh, the main as uh, main branch. We're going to hear lots uh, about uh, with main is usually the default development branch, and you're going to hear things like origin, and uh, origin is the default upstream uh, repo, and we we'll also have things like uh, uh, commands like head, and this is the current branch. So there are other when you see these commands, you uh, you can tell the meaning. Then um, you ha also have um, different uh, versions of writing the head like this. So I can't find the symbol currently now on my system, but um, there are just so much, so many commands. You don't have to memorize all of them. You can easily. Uh, refer them, check online, re, uh, research for the particular command you need in that situation if you uh, have to. So there are still more commands that, but we, it's easier to remember them or know them when you are working on a project. So you can explore this, um, these commands, create your own projects, Try work on something and see how you can even collaborate with your um, peers and see how things are done on fashion control. All right, so if there are any questions, I will use this last minute now to answer before we call it today. All right, um, no question. I wish your uh, subjects in assignments. Now, there are, remember, there are more commands, and if you need any help, you can always reach out to us if you have any challenges with your assignments that uh, involves you using your bits of on your system. Thank All right, you. So, all right. So this is why in the class.
Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.